So in this video I want to share some advice and some tips for writing the literature review chapter. I believe some of these tips are very uncommon, very rare. Uh, you will not see them very often and other tips you probably won't see ever. So I believe it's definitely worth sticking around uh, until the end of this video. And uh, importantly, this is not a video on how to write the literature review chapter. It's not a video on the whole process of writing. I do have another video in which I explain how to write the literature review chapter quickly. As I said in this video, I just share a couple of uh, pieces of advice that I believe are crucial and will definitely help you write that chapter. So advice number one, and I believe it's very, very important, uh, is to understand the overall purpose of this chapter. And I know this may sound obvious, but it's, it doesn't have to be. It's not, it's not necessarily obvious. Because what I mean here is that very often as students, we feel that uh, the only purpose of this chapter is for uh, the examiner or supervisor or somebody else uh, to evaluate our knowledge, to test our knowledge and to decide what grade to give us. Uh, whereas in practice, uh, the real purpose of this chapter is to educate our reader, to teach our reader, to update the reader's knowledge about the topic that we are investigating. So the way this happens basically is that you have done all the reading, all the reading about this specific topic, so your knowledge is definitely up to date. Uh, and now you need to pass this knowledge on to your reader. Uh, so you need to make sure that your reader and you are on the same page, basically, to make sure that the reader understands this, this field, understands this topic, understands the rationale for your study, the need for your study, understands the gap, if there is any gap, uh, that your study aims to address. So that's why it's so important to make sure that the reader understands this topic as well as you do. So just remember, your reader is not always the most knowledgeable person in the field. Even if, if you have a very skilled and very knowledgeable supervisor, uh, quite often they, they won't have knowledge that's so up-to-date, as, uh, as up-to-date as yours. So remember, this is not the purpose. Uh, the purpose of the chapter is not to simply see whether you understand the topic and give you uh, a certain grade, but rather to make sure that your readers uh, have a full understanding of your topic, because now you are the expert. You're becoming the expert in this field, whether you feel this way or not, you are becoming an expert. And this directly leads to the second piece of advice. It's very related. So the second piece of advice is to understand how to structure your argument. Uh, one thing I often repeat about the literature review chapter is that the whole purpose is to make sure that by the time you get to the end of this chapter and before you even present your, uh, your research questions or the aims of your study, your reader should have a fairly good understanding of where this is going. So your reader should be able to almost guess, maybe not exactly, but more or less, what your study is going to address. So that's, that's the, main, uh, the, the main goal you want to achieve. So your study, so, so the way you present the literature, the terms you define, the, the research you outline and explain, uh, all of this through the choice of these things, your reader should understand where this is going and by the end, like I said, it should be becoming more and more narrow and uh, eventually leading the reader to that, to that gap or whatever it is, the problem that your study aims to solve. And the way to achieve this is to start broad and then gradually start narrowing the argument down. So start broad uh, from the overall, the general definitions or uh, the, the overall broad field, whatever it is you're investigating, and then uh, continue to define the terms that are necessary, as I said, to make sure that the reader is on the same page as you, uh, and, and keep uh, going uh, more, uh, keep becoming more and more focused towards your context, towards the problem that your study will, uh, will aim to address. So just imagine, to give you an example, I usually use examples from education, so let's uh, this time come up with a different example. Imagine I want to explore uh, the issue of mental health, mental health stigma, and uh, possibly I want to explore links between uh, internet, internet use and mental health stigma. So let's just assume that I believe there, there must be a relationship, you know, people do and say different things online and post and share different things. And I may believe that perhaps this uh, n uh, may have a negative effect on, on mental health stigma in a specific country. So let's say in Scotland, I'm doing my study in Scotland, I believe that uh, these online activities are likely to uh, contribute to cr uh, creating that stigma, mental health stigma, which in turn will obviously affect 
many things, such as um, people's willingness to seek help or to talk about their mental health issues. So that's our hypothetical study. So the way I see it, if I was to, to write a literature review now, I would probably want to start with something very broad, as I said. So perhaps mental health in general, why it is important to, uh, to look after mental health. Or perhaps uh, I would start with mental health stigma, still quite, quite a broad term. Um, an important thing to note is that there is no one uh, right or correct or perfect approach. So just like I said, I could start with this or I could start with this. So eventually, so ultimately the decision will depend on you. How you want to structure this, this story or, or this uh, narrative about, about this uh, topic that you're investigating. But, but generally I believe I could probably start with mental health stigma. Then I would, uh, since I'm interested in uh, I have this suspicion, not necessarily hypothesis, because I would avoid that, that word in qualitative research, but I have this suspicion that internet use leads to mental health stigma. Uh, so I'm talking about, of course, uh, factors, the, the general topic can be described as some kind of exploration of factors leading to or contributing to stigma. So if that's my topic, I probably want to also outline other possible factors. I don't want to just focus on this, uh, this one factor that I uh, belief uh, is at play and I definitely need to show my awareness of other research. So I'll probably start with mental health stigma and then talk about possibly negative effects of mental health stigma because that's probably my rationale because we want to avoid that stigma and then I'll probably explore different possible factors that uh, contribute, that are known to contribute to this stigma. So after reviewing these different factors, whether I review internet as a factor or not will probably depend on whether there is research into this topic. But if there isn't research into this topic, I probably straight away want to move on to my context. So the context of, of Scotland. I have reviewed, I have presented and defined all the terms. I have showed what mental health stigma is, why is it important to explore it, why it's an issue. So by, by talking about different effects of stigma, I have outlined some research into possible factors that contribute to that stigma and now I want to show uh, the context, what, what I'm going to investigate. So I'm going to move on to Scotland, probably show some, some statistics or some numbers about mental health issues in Scotland and uh, anything else that I believe is relevant to understand this topic, as well as probably stating that uh, this topic in Scotland uh, is under research, if, if that's in fact the case. So even before I actually outline the exact research questions and the aims of the study, it's pretty much uh, clear already what I'm going to do. So I'm ready to move on to my methodology chapter. And the next advice that I want to share is to understand how to uh, find the right arguments or the literature if there isn't enough literature on this specific topic that you're exploring. Uh, the reason I, I'm saying this, the reason I decided to record this is because actually in the, in the last week I talked to uh, two of you during my tutorials uh, and uh, so there are two people who basically said the same thing. What if there isn't, my, my research is into a relatively under-researched uh, phenomenon or problem what do I do uh, in terms of the literature review? What kind of literature do I share if there isn't much research? And that's the whole point I'm doing this research. And this is a very good question and I, I've heard it before in the past as well. So, so it's definitely something very important uh, to advise. So if in fact you are doing a study into something that hasn't been explored much or at all, which by the way is not, not the only purpose of doing research. So if, if your study has been, if similar studies have been conducted, then also don't worry because I've also heard uh, some of you being concerned and asking what, what if somebody else has done this similar study. That's okay, you're adding more evidence to that, that particular question or, or field or phenomenon you're exploring. But if you in fact uh, are planning to conduct a study that nobody has ever done, so for example this this particular uh, relationship between stigma and internet. Let's say, I don't know if anyone has done this, imagine, let's imagine that nobody has ever done this. Well, if there are no studies of mental, of possible influence of internet on mental health stigma, what do I discuss in my literature review? What kind of studies? So the way to address this problem is to just, uh, you, you will have to be a little bit creative, I guess. Again, there is no uh, one particular way, one correct way of doing this. Even if I take this example, you would probably find a couple of different ways for what you want to talk about in the literature review. The way I see it, and that's kind of what I touched upon in the previous advice, uh, and I kind of struggled without giving away what this advice will be, 
if there is not enough or if there is no research into this particular aspect and how it influences stigma, uh, I still definitely want to talk about other possible factors, that's for sure, regardless of whether there is research into internet and, and stigma or not. And then after that, I'll see. Perhaps if there isn't anything like that, I will probably want to demonstrate in general that there is uh, there are studies that explored influence of internet on other beliefs or aspects of our lives. So that's because that's what it is. You have to be creative. Uh, essentially, stigma is about beliefs. So why not talk about the possible influence of uh, internet on other sets of beliefs? On I don't know any beliefs, religious beliefs, or some behaviors, habits. Uh, political views. I'm sure there's plenty of research into that. So basically I'm going to show the reader that uh, since it is uh, known that internet has an influence on so many other beliefs, it is reasonable to, to believe that it may also have an impact on how stigma is, is created. Uh, the aim is to look for something if you don't have a research that has done exactly what you're doing, the aim is to find something similar. So basically going from this very specific, this time to broad. If there is anything on this uh, this specific topic you want to talk about. If there isn't, just start circling around the topic, around and around. So uh, trying to find anything that has any relevance and, and can be uh, used to link back to your topic. So that's the way to structure the argument if there isn't literature on this topic that you're exploring. So final two pieces of advice, uh, reading or not reading your sources. So now this one is going to be controversial. You're not you're not going to hear this anywhere else, I believe. Definitely not in academic settings, but just remember you don't have to read every single source, every single source that you cite or provide in your literature review. What I mean by this, I don't mean uh, of course I don't want you to lie about uh, or review the studies that you, you never read because I, I believe and I don't think I have to explain this to you really that if you want to review a study properly you probably need to have some understanding of it so ideally you do want to read it uh, or read about it of course but what I mean specifically is that there are uh, sometimes you just want to list things for example so again using our example of mental health stigma if you're just uh, if you're not reviewing a study of uh, mental health stigma or, or factors that influence this stigma. Uh, if you're not interested in providing details, if it if it's not shaping your view of you know of the topic in some way, if you just want to list, for example, studies just for the sake of the argument, just to say that studies have been conducted, for example, in in the UK and Spain and Poland and France, and then providing several sources in the brackets, uh, in brackets, then. Uh, you don't have to read every single study. If, if you found this kind of a similar list and, or you're just compiling that list from different sources and different literature reviews that you've been reading uh, you're, and, and you're not planning on reviewing each study in detail, it's okay just to, if you know 100% that these studies have in fact explored this topic and you just want to list that for the sake of argument, it is fine not to read every single one of them. And the reason I'm saying this is because I know people, you would be surprised at how many uh, authors, published authors in, in scientific journals or, or book authors, how many of them do this? So believe me, they don't read every single source. I just don't want you to suffer from inferiority complex or that imposter syndrome thinking how in the world am I going to read that much? How in the world do all of these people read that much and I'm struggling to read my sources? I don't want you to struggle uh, with this uh, with a sense of inferiority. I want you to understand that people do this and you have every right, right to do this as well. And the final advice is to keep your literature review simple. Again, not simple in literature review, not something that you traditionally uh, use in one sentence. But what I mean is that Again, narrow the argument, be narrow. Uh, it's very tempting to show, to want to show that I've read this and I've read this and I've read that. That's okay if you find a way to, uh, in fact, incorporate all that stuff into your literature review or just provide some lists of different studies, that's fine. But sometimes there will, there will be times when you're reading these interesting things and, and you want to show that you've read that and you want to share these uh, interesting findings, these fascinating findings but they are not necessarily that relevant to your study, then you just have to learn, I guess, to say no and to omit 
these studies. And this uh, refers generally to research. I've said it many times that you don't want to put try to put too much on your plate. You just want your niece research to be focused and narrow. It's best to it's better to be narrow and explore something in detail than to try to achieve everything at once. So same thing uh, refers to your literature review. Remember about point number one that I made. So you want to walk your reader through this field, through uh, the findings, through the most relevant things to understand. You just want your reader to understand what exactly your study will achieve. And I've seen many literature reviews uh, that are too broad and they do try to explore and explain too many things. And eventually I'm not sure uh, why you're showing me this. So basically, that's another thing. Whatever you are showing to me as a reader, I'm always, I want to trust you and I always want to assume that this will have some meaning. And too often have I seen literature reviews where you're showing me something and then you just kind of leave it. And then I keep wandering throughout the whole literature review, where is this going to resurface? What, what was the point of that study or that topic? So you want to keep it simple and that's uh, that's my final advice. So if you enjoyed this video, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. If you did, please like the video to help it get found on YouTube. If you have any questions, uh, write your questions in the comments. And if you feel that you require a more detailed or in-person advice, uh, feel free to reach out about the private tutorials that I offer.